Well, hello, folks. This is Garth at GW Leathercraft. And today I want to start a series of videos to take you through from start to finish on a on a gun belt and holster. Now I'm I've been doing uh, Western style holsters for a while now. Mostly the uh, Peacemakers and and the Rugers and those sort of things, but I wanted to add to my lineup the 1911. Now, um, while well, this is uh, everyday carry or one like it for uh, a lot of people, um, and, and you know they carry it in a more modern way, I wanted to uh, have a an option for uh, particularly for wild bunch shooters and it was it's my intention to make it uh, um, with a more Western uh, flair if you will um, so anyway when when I say start I already have a pattern but I'm going to uh, show you how to make a pattern and then you'll be able to uh, uh, hopefully, uh, if you if you wish, you can uh, make other patterns. Because once you know how to do it, it's the same for anything. Now, I have the mold gun, and if you're using a, a real one, well, then uh, that'll work too. First thing you do, you take a strip of this is poster board. I like to use poster board; doesn't really matter. This is a strip off the off the piece. And I make a center line. I did this video once before and I had it on the close up, and most of the video was out of frame. So, so anyway, we have the mold gun. So, what you want is you want a strip of leather. This will work. Um, most of my holsters come out to be seven or eight ounce after they're lined, uh, so that a piece of seven eight ounce will work for your strip. If you're if you're planning, you, what you want is your strip uh, of leather to be the same uh, thickness as the finished thickness of the holster. If you're going to line it, then double you know whatever you have to do to add it up, and then you want to see if I got a piece that isn't all marked up. Yeah. So you want to measure the critical points so that one critical point is around the trigger guard. So you just feed it around, feeling it out. You don't want it. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. Um, I've got that on the ejector port, but I don't have it pulled into the ejector port, so that'll be okay. Usually, you will uh, allow a little. This this will this will co uh, coincide. This mark will coincide with the seam. The seam, okay. So you want to allow a little bit, but just so it goes around comfortably without too much binding. And there, there's the mark. Now, that is the. Basically, how long, how far it is around at the trigger guard, and that is six and five eighths. So we just, I'll just mark that down. And then you want another one, another measurement around, allowing about the same for your wiggle room quarter of an inch good is good And around the barrel and slide and that sort of stuff is 
four and five eighths. Okay, so I've seen some people do it like this, where they just sort of roll it off the side, and that, that works. What I do is I, um, you always start with the center line, and you start with the, the um, um, well, you can do it two ways. You can do it two ways. Um, you can mark, I usually line this up here. I guess I'll do it the way I normally do it. Line this up here, and then I go around, trying to keep from allowing for the thickness of the pen too much. Okay. Trying to get an outline that is vertical, if you understand what I mean. Now, we want six and five eighths, but we want half of that. So, three and five sixteenths, which would be two there. And four and five eighths is two and five sixteenths, which would be to there. Since this is, uh, you know, the, the type of style of gun is more or less straight lines, I just go from there, I draw a straight line, parallel with my center line, and then here the same thing. That gives you your two, uh, your trigger guard line and your barrel slide line. And then you want to bring it down, line it up on the bottom with your bottom, line those two lines up. The, the distance around the barrel, because it's thicker and the trigger guard is slenderer through this way, it, I don't know if you can see that where you are, if it's the right angle, but the the difference original here, this line, is greater than the difference here, and that is because this uh, is slender through here. Anyway, you line that up, and then what you want to do is kind of, you know, I mean, I you're going to draw that line across there, and you want to extend or, or get some idea of where the trigger guard ends, just like that. You add, you could add a quarter, but I like to add three-eighths of an inch. This is for seam allowance, in case you're wondering. Now that would basically be it, or at least for that line. I I like this angle to be a little bit, um, we can carry the, the welt in there, but I'd like this to be more of a flow to it. And of course we round this off just because and actually we didn't allow any length for this so it should add that's enough to the end just so that we have keep the end of the barrel back a little bit from the end of the um, from the end of the holster now with that there, the one thing I didn't measure was the center of the trigger guard, or you can measure the edge of the trigger guard, whichever you want, like this edge here. Now 
Now that is the edge of the trigger guard, and that is three and seven eighths. So, to the inner edge of the trigger guard is three and seven eighths. That's uh, uh, one and fifteen. Just so you know, I already measured the trigger guard, and it is about a, an inch overall. That's what that is, okay? Because this is going to be, uh, the, the trigger is going to be exposed on this one. Now, what you want beyond that, you have the bottom of the trigger guard here, all right? And I'll round that off. Then you want to establish the upper end across the top. Now, that's a boat where that's going to set. Um, I'm going to have to get my head in there, and I'm, you'll have to pardon me while I do it, because I have to be able to see straight down. And that looks pretty good. Then this here, we want to um, kind of mark out our sight. We don't want it to come up above that. So then, it's just a matter of kind of making a pleasing curve here between those two. Can be more square, but you don't want too square a corner, or at least for this design. And this down here is just going to get a um, one inch pretty well. Just like that there easy way to do that. Now this gets cut out. So just to the center line. Now in practice, this whole process um, might take longer than that. I have just got done doing it for myself, so I sort of have in mind what I want to see. So that helps if you start from scratch. And you may go through some, some poster board. Uh, you can always add a piece and I've quite often tape a piece on if I cut something and then want it back. Now since you scribe that center line you should be able to fold it on the line. It should fold. Well, it's not going to. You want it to fold on the line, that's the objective. Okay. So after you've folded it, I just trace it. It really don't have to, but I do. I trace the, the important part to trace is of course that, where you can cut it. Now, you have to figure out how high, or well, I should say, where the top of the belt is gonna be. Now, some people like them to carry high, some low. Um, I'm going to go with what I already decided, just because, but you could have your line for your fold for your skirt 
quite low and and that would put the the gun butt quite high compared to your belt or you could have the fold higher and have the gun belt a little bit lower uh, I'm gonna go with about an inch and since this is gonna be a straight straight cant on this I'm just gonna it doesn't have to be perfect but I'm just gonna draw a line like that uh, perpendicular to our center line and that's going to be our fold line and the um, when you get to this point uh, you can just leave it and, and figure it out afterwards I know sort of the what I'm going for so I'm just going to draw it in I it's just nice to have a little shape to it I like it sort of like that and we'll finish it up afterwards um, I'm not sure that that's about where I had it before so that that'll work so you cut up to the line and you cut the bottom out too of course You can follow, uh, uh, follow the line or, or follow the edge of the other half. do is just cut all this excess off that I don't want. Should check to make sure it's going to be in. There we go. Yeah, see, there I was going to cut it too short. You can do this many ways. I'm making a full skirt for this one okay so um, pop that out the other way so that is how that is going to lay and you can draw out what you want there's certain uh, places that I like or certain uh, shape that I like and when you, but you can shape it however you want. Sure you hold that down because you don't want it to be uh, misplaced when, when you're cutting or when you're marking it out you want it to follow uh, you know be in the right spot It's pretty close.
to uh, pretty close to your size that you want in your general shape. Now that's if you want that style of horse. Now beyond this point there's a few little pe little bits that I do. Now this will get a strap to hold skirt and pouch together. Um, where you want it to go across is up to you. Sort of in the middle is usually the best idea. And and I just use the I just use the lines on the mat. I square it up that way. And then because I I prefer it if it goes across square, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I just line it up on the on the mat. And I draw two lines. These are for just for purposes of getting the strap in the right spot. And you want to measure, well, you don't have to, you can put it anywhere, but I normally put it in the center of the pouch. That's two and a half, so one and a quarter. I put them I put two slots an inch apart. There and there. I'm not going to put them on the pouch part, but I, um, just for our purposes, I mark them on the pouch. And that would be the inside edge of the slot. So then, <clears throat> I want holes that tell me where I want the slot and then I use those holes to make the slot on the, well, not that one, on the, um, on the skirt. Those are those two holes. Now, normally with it depends. I am considering uh, a line of holsters that are unlined, but uh, most of my holsters are lined, so I'm going to assume that we're going to line this. And if we're going to line it, then one thing that I do is I put a block on the back of the holster right there. Now, if I'm going to do that, I have to also predetermine at some point, you know, before I get to it, I have to know how wide my belt is. Now, on most of my western rigs, the belt is three inches wide, but on this one, it's not going to be. It's going to be two and a quarter, okay? So, two in, the, the, in order to do the math that I do to determine where the block sets, um, with the three-inch belt, through trial and error, I have determined that the block, well, actually, the center point of the block, the block is an inch deep this way. So the center point of the block is at four inches from there. That's with a three inch belt. So you understand we're allowing an inch. That's not, that's not all for the block, but because of the shape of the, the fact that the skirt is coming down around, and you're trying to fit something through that is has some thickness, you know, maybe up to some of them are up to close to three eighths of an inch thick by the time you get done. So you can't just you can't just put it right up hard up and shove the belt through it. it won't work. You need to allow. So that is what I allow, and basically it works out to allow in half an inch because the block is an inch wide. The holes are in the center. If the holes are at four inch, then that means the edge of the block is at three and a half. The belt is three inch. There you go. Okay, so you so you understand what we're doing. So if I'm going with a two and a quarter block, right? Two and a quarter or two and a quarter belt, then I need to put the center of the holes at three and a quarter. So that that's the that's the way around the figuring. Okay. Now. <clears throat> So, 
This will be the center of the holes. Center line, or the, the, the line that the holes is on. All right. Now the only problem with putting a block on here that I have found is when you're sewing with the machine, you want it to be so that you have room. Like if you get it over this way too far, then it uh, the, 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 the sewing machine is, has a problem with getting around it. So um, I make the blocks an inch and three quarter long. That's just arbitrary, that's not important. And you want it to be, uh, that's the center line, so you want it to be a ways away from this edge. So I'm going to say that we make the center of the block right there. And that will be a hole at some point, but uh, we make it like that. Uh, uh, the the, the um, two holes being an inch apart and centered at that point. Now, I don't... Uh, This, of course, you can you can dispense with this. You don't need this. This is what I do. Um, and as we go, this will become clear. But that is the beginning. Now, also, what I also do, um, because th this is an attachment point, this is a means of attaching uh, or holding the, the skirt to the pouch and the whole purpose in it is so that uh, when when you pluck the gun from the holster the holster doesn't come up with it okay that is the purpose in it now partly that's accomplished by the strap but depending maybe this one wouldn't be so much but depending on uh, the the where the strap is and how tight it is and you can have an issue where because of this the, the, it's tapering down here because it's come two pieces coming together you can have the holster rise up like when you pull it if, if it's a little tight for some reason and and then it jams right so then it's it's cocked up way higher than it should be so you don't want that so this block eliminates that and you'll see as we go along how I do it but those three holes this one was on a center line that's that hole and these two these are rivet holes this is for a bolt okay now this will come come clear as we go but for now that is the pattern okay now this is for your trigger guard or your trigger and or your trigger finger actually and it doesn't line up perfectly there now because it's paper and not leather, of course. But that is more or less the way that will set, right? I would say. Yes, about like that. And there we go. So this is the pattern for the holster. Now, we don't get a pattern for the... Well, the pattern for the belt, yeah, maybe maybe a little pattern for the belt, but there, that's the pattern for the holster. So I'm going to shut this video off. I'm going to cut some pieces, and um, I'll bring you back when I get uh, the pieces ready for putting together, I guess, for the holster. Okay.